Kevin hanging out with Nessa, and we have Pia Mia. Hi, honey. Hi, how are you? You are gorgeous. So are you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, so Pia Mia, let's just get a little bit of an understanding of, you know, your music and what you're doing, mm -hmm. okay? Because a lot of people might know you. Maybe it's a West Coast thing, so now we're going to talk to you and really understand what's going on. So cool. you were found on YouTube? So I started singing at the age of eight, posting covers on YouTube. Yeah. Got it. So I did that. I mean, I still do that right. to this day. But um, I actually got discovered at Earth Cafe in Los Angeles by one of Babyface's producer's wives. Okay, wait. Ba okay, Babyface producer's, producer's wife. wife. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so she came up to me and she was like, yo, would you happen to be a singer? Like, totally random. Right. Just out of the blue. And I was like, yeah, actually I am. We exchanged information and that's kind of how it all started. Nice. Yeah. So that was the first place that I learned how to record. I signed to Babyface for a year for like a production deal. And so I kind of like learned the ropes of recording studios and how songwriting goes and everything like that. And then, um, you know, from there I just kept working, kept working on my voice, trying to get out to perform wherever I could. And I don't know, it just kind of went. And then there. it just took off from that point. Yeah. Okay, so now we're at this point where you are signed to Interscope. Yes. Okay, so that's awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. It, I love Interscope. We're always on the same page, and they just really feel like family, and that was what was really important to me. Got it. Yeah. And so you're originally from Guam. Yes, born and raised native to Guam. Do you actually know how to talk and everything? I didn't grow up speaking tomorrow because the native language is kind of dying out right. since we have such huge military bases there and really only the elders speak. But right. like half a day means I was going to say, you can't steal the one thing I know how I'm to say. Sorry. Half a day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, whatever. Okay, you stole it from me. Okay, so now you have a song. Yes. And it's called Do It Again. Mm -hmm. All right, now how did this come about? So Do It Again is my first official single ever, so it's okay. so insane to me. The record came about, so growing up on Guam, there's not a lot of people that come to perform on the island. Right. So Jay Boog was like the first concert I ever saw. I was 16. He came to Guam to perform. Went to his concert. He has a song called Let's Do It Again. Yeah. So when I heard his song, I was like, this is insane. I love this. I need to do something to tribute to him. Like, That's so cute. I love him so much. So... I thought maybe I could like help make it a bigger song. I know Let's Do It Again was already huge. Right. But I just thought maybe I could spin it more pop, help make it bigger. Yeah. Something. Got it. So did my own spin on it, which is cool because it's my first single. Like being able to have such a huge influence on my first single is insane to me. But anyway, so we did the record about two years ago, had it done. And then I was in a session with Nick Nat, Chris, and Tyga. Yeah. I knew the three guys, went to go say what's up to them, and Do It Again got played. And Chris and Tyga were like, yo, this is insane. Can we get on it? Which what is are crazy? the chances of that happening? <laughs> Which that, is right, crazy. this is crazy. And so they got on it, and we dropped the record. It's doing really well. We're finishing up the music video. Going to put that out soon. Chris and Tiger are both in it, so it's going to be. How were you great. able to do that? Their schedules. Honestly, I just, truthfully, I think it's fate. Like. I don't know how all of this came together. I don't know how I'm here right now. I just think it was meant to be. This is crazy right now. Yeah. It's like, I don't even believe that it's real, kind of. Like, everyone in Guam has to be tripping out right now. Oh, everyone on the island has been so supportive. Like, yeah, of course. My dad and my siblings are still back there. My whole family still back on Guam. So they come back and forth. And it's so funny because they'll be like, oh, are you PMEA's dad? Are you PMEA's siblings? And it's funny because it's like. I don't know, just so weird to me that anyone would even know that, you know? That's cr This is crazy. I'm excited <laughs> for you. Okay, so the name Pia Mia. Yeah. Interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. So Pia, is that actually your name or is that... Yeah, Pia Mia is my real first name. Got it. I'm named after my Auntie Mia. Got it. She was about 10 when I was about to be born and she was the only girl in my family. She's my dad's sister. So when I was coming, my parents didn't want her to feel left out. So they named me after her. And we're peas because my dad's name is Peter, so all of us are peas. Nice. So that's how PMEA came to be. Wow. Okay, so now, are you and Kylie actually really good friends? Yeah. Kylie Jenner? Okay, because yeah. I was reading up on the internet. Okay. Yeah, it's like coming out to L.A., I used to... Um, like sing around my friends and stuff but you know in LA everyone's trying to be a singer everyone's trying to do music and I would actually have friends be like all right can you shut up like stop right. <laughs> so I stopped I wouldn't sing in front of anyone like right. I would sing when I'm by myself or if I was on stage and then when I met Kylie it became like a thing of ours we would do little skits where I would like sing and she would like mouth it and like um one of our first sleepovers she was like will you sing me to sleep so it it's nice to have a friend who like supports you and Kylie's really like a sister to me. Like yeah. she has my back. We always, 
you know, are there for each other. Are you encouraging her to sing or is it? I honestly love her voice. I think can she, she sing? I think if she wanted to, she could. Like get lessons just, and just actually take control of it. I love her tone. Yeah. And like she jokes around all the time singing and I'm like, I don't know why you're laughing. Like it sounds good. Hey man, <laughs> might as well make but, money off of it. But yeah, yeah it's just she's so nice. Her and her whole family has been really supportive and it's just cool to be around genuine but, nice people. And you know, and that's just when you hear that, considering the fact that you're from Guam and mm -hmm. you didn't think all this would actually happen for you. Yeah. Like you wouldn't think of Kylie as being your friend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because there's the stigma that, oh, it's the Kardashians, they're more in the mm -hmm. Hollywood scene. But to hear that they are genuine, that they treat you nice, you yeah. know, it's nice. Yeah, I feel like I feel like when you're in the music industry, all that like goes away. Like that doesn't even exist. Like to me, like fame and like, oh, like this Hollywood lifestyle that everyone thinks is so glamorous. Like it's not what anyone thinks it is, you know? Yeah. Like at all. And I think it's important to hear that from you because yeah. young girls look up to you yeah. and they see one thing, but really it's, hey, it's, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Yeah. And I also think that like a lot of people think, oh, like I just came from Guam and like I just come from a really rich family and like that's not the case at all. Like I go through the same problems that everyone goes through. We all go through the same problems. Like I worked really hard for what I have. Like when I came out to LA, I had like a $10 a day budget. Like I lived in a 600 square foot apartment with my mom for like four years. I just moved into my dream building. It's like a lot of work and there's still a lot of work to be done and it's, it's like a never ending process, you know? Why do you think people question you? so much they just wonder like well oh, pme she's just a pretty girl i just think like being able to have access to people over social media just makes people curious mm -hmm. i don't know i think honestly i don't i don't really know i think people maybe are just interested because i sing on my stuff and they kind of want to know more about me maybe or is it because people don't think you actually know how to sing or like what is it that you feel that people continuously like is it because you're pretty and i know it sounds weird yeah, but yeah. sometimes really pretty girls kind of have to prove themselves more. You know what I mean? I see that. Um, I think it's just a combination of things. I think it's a combination of people being bored. Yeah. Um, people. Internet trolls, of course. Yeah, yeah. Just right. like trying to fill their time. The like entertain. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Maybe they're doing it for entertainment or something. I don't know. But what I found is like when I see negative people on my page, if I like write them something positive back, they'll start being so nice. I'm like, they I'm just so want based. attention. I'm so based right now. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now your love life. You are in a relationship yeah. with Nick Knack. Yeah. Who is from the Bay Area. Yep. I spent many years out there. We Dope. know Nick Knack very well. <laughs> so how is this relationship going? It's going good. What's cool about me and Nick is we were we've known each other for two years. We've been working on my album for a long time. And when we met, like we never had that chemistry of like, oh, we like each other. Like, it was never like that at all. We worked together. He, we were both in relationships. Like, we went through the ups and downs. I would help him, like, find girls, you yeah. know, to possibly date or whatever. Yeah, you know, of the course. whole thing. And so um, I turned 18, and then he kind of, like, started showing me that he liked me. We were actually right. at a GEZ concert and he like held my hand, which we, yeah. so he lives with, you know, six guys, I'm sure you know Nick, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So they were all like my big brothers. Right. So I'm always like, they all carry me. Like it's just very like brother, sister type thing. So I'm always holding on to Nick, whatever. But then this time he like rubbed his thumb over my hand. Oh no. And you know when you know. Yes. And my body heat shot through the roof. I was like, oh my God, my heart started beating. And instantly, like, I just knew, like, there there was always something about Nick, mm -hmm. but I didn't really, like, know what it was. Oh boy. But yeah, you guys. But we've been. We've been dating and it's great. We separate our business and our personal mm. life, you know, so it's cool just to be able to work with your best friend. He gets me, he gets my music, he understands like the music industry. And it's cool also because when I met Nick, he hadn't popped off yet. Mm -hmm. And now getting to see him grow and like be with him through everything is cool. And I feel like we're both going through that with each other. You know, that's awesome. But he, yeah. you know, he, he always thought you're cute, but he couldn't do anything about it. And right when he turned 18, he I was like, no. I got to get to her before everybody else beats me to this. I had no idea. Listen, that's a Bay thing. Look, no I'm, I'm telling you the game right now. That's so he funny. was waiting for that perfect opportunity. I think that's so funny. Like, I had no idea. Of course. Yeah. I had no idea. When I first met Nick, I was like, oh, he's so cute. But I, like, let it go instantly. Right. You right. Know? It's like, like, oh, he's oh. cute. I was like, he'll never like me. Like, whatever. I'm not old enough to date him anyway. Right. Let it go. 
And then when I turned 18, I was like, oh my God, no way. But so is it hard for you to be working with him at times and then being in a relationship? Do you guys get on each other's nerves? Well, you would think that. Yeah. But I think we don't because we know each other so well and because I've seen him in relationships, he's seen me in relationships. We both know how we work. Right. And like what bothers us and, you know, everything. We just know each other like the back of our hand. So we're, we're pretty cool about it, actually. We have a great relationship. We don't really fight ever. We're very, I just know him so well. I'm just like, wh what could I be upset about? Like, I get you. I yeah. know how you work, you know? Wow. Listen, Lucked career out. is going well. Lucked You're out. beautiful. You can actually <laughs> sing. You have Thank a boyfriend. You. Thank you. I'm just, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with everything. You know what I, I mean? I hope it goes well. Working hard. So Always what's the name hard. of the album? We don't have the name of the album okay. yet. But hopefully soon. Um, we're just going to see how Do It Again goes. Okay. And then drop this video. Just kind of take it day by day. And then our, do we have a date on when the album might? Or kind of a season that you're hoping, you're aiming for? I don't know. You know, I'm thinking maybe I might drop another single after Do It Again. I think it really all just depends on how this goes. I've never done this before. Right. So I'm kind of just trying to feel it out. But um, we've been working on the album for a year and a half. We've recorded, like, if not more than a hundred songs like we've recorded a ton and we're gonna keep recording up until the album comes out you know you never know what you're gonna get got it but just gonna keep working and before you go so you know krav maga is that my is yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. that right okay yeah. so i saw a video of you mm -hmm. like really putting in work mm -hmm. so is that how you stay in shape and everything or is yeah. that just krav maga is one of the ways i stay in shape i actually got obsessed with krav for a while i would do it like four hours a night i don't have as much time to do that anymore oh but my gosh yeah it's dope like i i know like gun defense knife defense like choke so defense, tell basically. me so if someone's running up on me right now with a knife what do i do there's different things like you always obviously if someone's running up on a knife running up on you with a knife you're not going to be expecting it but like one of the knife defenses is like if someone's going to like stab you from underneath you're supposed to like be feet like wide hips back and then you make this 90 degree angle with your arm so that like if someone hits you got it your arm's not going to collapse because if it's too far out the knife will slide up and stab you and if it's too far in then it will get stabbed yeah. so you got to make sure you got that 90 degree angle and then your hand should be flat out like this okay and then you would basically do your hips back and you kind of like see how the side of your arm is sharp right you want to like turn it a little bit when you go to counter it so that's like the block of it, but there's like a whole thing to like go and take the knife away. Wow. I'll, I'll, I could explain. Yes. It to you this this is so cool I'm to me. So, I'm so into it. Like I was so into it. The instructors invited me to be an instructor. Like I went through a 56 hour week long period of training and like started assisting and yeah. Oh, I think this I is just, so awesome that girls know this because I think protection is just crucial. Yeah, and I do too. To see that you actually take pride in it and you actually care about it is oh, so yeah. dope. Definitely. I think it's great. Anyone can do Krav. Yeah. It works for anyone and you can obviously use it anytime. You don't need any special gear or whatever. And I just think it's good to know. I mean, like walking on the street alone, like, you know. Has you anyone know, ever wanted. attacked you ever? Um, No. Not like, <laughs> no one's ever came up to me like... and been like, I'm <laughs> coming right. to stab you. But I mean, um, I mean, I've had some encounters with people, right. like <laughs> boyfriends and their families, like following me around and like cornering me and stuff. But And then you're like, don't do it. I'm going to set that's an example really, out of you. That's really why I got serious about it. I was doing it for exercising because I was interested in it. But yeah. I started getting really serious about it because I, this like crazy family. Okay, so it stems from actually wanting to protect yourself. Yeah. it's Well, it and started from wrong just like that. wanting to yeah. exercise. I've always been into fighting. Like, I love action films. So I thought it was cool to just know. But then I got so super into it because of that whole situation. situation. Which is cool now. Which what? is in the past. In the past. Whatever. Now we're moving on. But I think it's great for anyone to know. For yeah. You, I mean, you never know when you're going to need it. You never know, man. You never know.